Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today's video is going to be on the Chinese Cobra. Now, this is suggested by a subscriber and friend of mine, Brandon. He wanted me to do a video on the Chinese Cobra. So that's what we're going to do. Now, before we begin, remember, I'm a professional. Don't attempt anything you see on my channel ever. And if you're new here and like snakes or want to learn about them, consider subscribing. Taxonomy, naming, grouping, and labeling animals. So we've talked about this before. This scientific name refers to specific species. Now this one is Naja atra. Naja, the genus, atra, the species. And there's many common names. Chinese cobra being one, Taiwan cobra being another, and Formosan cobra. But they all refer to this one right here, Naja Atra. Where are they found? Now they're found in Southeast and North Asia in these countries. And some of these areas also have the monocle cobra, Naja Kiuthia. And that leads to them being confused for one another. Now some general description about them. Now they can get quite large, typically between four and five feet, but there have been some that have been up to six feet or more. That's rare. I've never seen one that big, but I have seen monocle cobra, one monocle cobra that was massive, about six feet long. But so these are similar to monocle cobras and they can get fairly large. Now their color can vary as well, depending on where they're found. So which area they're found in. Some areas they can be grayish, whitish, and then others pretty much black. And this one you can see is pretty black. There's some white spots on it. It's hard to see in the video. I'm gonna show the male too, who has white banding. Now here's the male Chinese Cobra for comparison. You see these bands, these beautiful little bands on it. And this isn't even as pretty as they get. They can be very banded, very beautiful. Now their hood marking looks like a horseshoe similar to a horseshoe. And this one has a little bit different pattern. It's not connected. It looks like two little, two little oval shaped eyes, sort of. Kind of similar to the spectacle cobra. Now my female and male don't have that little horseshoe pattern, but think of it as these connected at the bottom. But the pattern is varied and can actually connect and look like a circle can actually touch those so they can actually look more like a circle and that's where the confusion with monocle cobra comes into play because not only that not only can these have similar pattern to a monocle cobra monocle cobras don't always have a perfect circle so some individual monocle cobras the pattern might not touch so it might not be a perfect circle and it could look like that horseshoe pattern Now some other little general behavior, of course, these will hood up, hood up and hiss defense mechanism when cornered, but they'll always, like any snake, prefer to flee. So if they can't flee and they're cornered, they'll hood up and hiss to scare away potential predators or anything messing with it. Now these are terrestrial species, diurnal, so they've been found hunting throughout the daylight hours. So we'll move on to the habitat. So the habitat of the Chinese Cobra. They are like many snakes can adapt to many different habitats. Grassland, woodland, forested areas, near human settlements, rice paddy fields. And there's actually 
high concentration of these near these rice paddy fields or human settlements because we'll mention in the diet about how people attract rodents and these being rodent specialists will flock to the area where there's prey that's available. So they can be found in these areas where humans are also. And that leads to, of course, trouble with these guys getting killed or people potentially getting hurt. Reproduction. Now being a cobra, like all true cobras in Naja, in the genus Naja, they're egg layers. And like the other snakes we've talked about, males will compete, wrestling each other, trying to pin each other's head down for the breeding rights with the female. Awesome. Now let's talk about their venom. And they have a complex mixture, a mixture of neurotoxins, cardiotoxins, cytotoxins. And actually a very cool thing about the Chinese cobra is these are not spitting cobras, but their teeth are slightly modified for spitting. So not like a true spitting cobra, they kind of fling it. So some individuals actually have been shown to fling venom. Now this one does, but only when it's in its enclosure. When it's in its enclosure, I have to keep it covered because it'll strike at the glass and you'll see it covered in it. Even when the snake's not hitting the glass, it flings it, venom goes on the glass. So that's something to be aware of if you do work with the species. Another one is a monocle cobra. They've also been shown to fling venom. So it's not like the actual spitting cobras that go, they fling it. Not all of them have been shown to do it, but some of them have. Isn't that amazing? The diet of the Chinese cobra. Now as juveniles, babies, they will mostly eat amphibians. As they grow, they switch over to mainly reptiles and mammals, these rodent specialists. So they'll even eat snakes though. But as mentioned, where they're found, the habitat, this is why they can be found close to human settlements because people attract rodents and these are just looking for a feed so they can be found near where people are. And being a lapids, they have the short front fixed fangs. So unlike vipers that have those long hinged like fangs, these are very short, very small. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video on the beautiful Chinese cobra. Such an awesome species, beautiful one too. And just, it's just amazing working with them and being in their presence. And keep leaving video suggestions. I love being able to make the stuff that you wanna see. That's most important to me, filming things and providing content that you would like to see. But anyways, subscribe if you're new. Love you all. Take care until next time.